When you're ready to examine the fundus, switch on the ophthalmoscope light and adjust it to the large round beam of white light. Also make sure the light is bright enough. Set the ophthalmoscope to zero diopters. After darkening the room, ask the patient to look over your left shoulder at a specific spot on the wall. Look over my left shoulder. Mm -hmm. Using your left eye and left hand, Examine the patient's left eye. From 15 inches away and 15 degrees lateral to the patient's line of vision, shine the light beam on the pupil. Locate the red reflex, which should appear as an orange glow in the pupil. Note any opacities that interrupt the red reflex. While holding the red reflex in view, approach the patient's eye along a 15 degree line lateral to her line of vision until the ophthalmoscope is close to the eye. Try to find the optic disc by following the retinal vessels toward the place where they converge. Now bring the optic disc into sharp focus by adjusting the ophthalmoscope lens. Note the color of the optic disc, the clarity of its margin, and the size of the physiologic cup. Normally, the disc is yellowish-orange to creamy pink and round or oval with well-demarcated margins. It may be surrounded by white or pigmented rings or crescents. The optic cup to disc ratio is usually less than one to two. Moving your head and instrument as a unit, inspect the retinal vessels and adjacent retina by following the vessels from the disc to the periphery in four directions. Note the relative size and color of the smaller lighter arteries and the larger darker veins. Look for changes such as nicking of the veins at arteriovenous crossings. There should be none. Examine the surrounding retina for hemorrhages or exudates, noting their size, shape, color, and distribution. Again, there should be none. Finally, examine the fovea and surrounding macula by directing your light beam laterally or asking the patient to look directly into the light. The tiny bright reflection at the center of the fovea may help orient you. To focus on more anterior structures, such as opacities in the vitreous or lens, change the diopter on the ophthalmoscope to more positive numbers, such as plus 10 or plus 12. Repeat the ophthalmoscopic examination on the patient's right eye using your right hand and right eye. How an ophthalmoscope works and how you can use this instrument to examine an eye. Many students, and qualified doctors for that matter, may tremble at the prospect of examining an eye. However, all you need is a system, a basic knowledge of the anatomy of the eye, and the ability to use an ophthalmoscope. Simple in theory, but clear instruction and practice in this skill is essential. First of all, you need to check your equipment and make sure it works before starting your examination. If the batteries are flat or if a colleague has left the ophthalmoscope off its charger, there will be no light and you will not be able to see anything. Believe me, there's nothing more frustrating than a flat scope, so always make sure that when you finish using this equipment, turn it off and if necessary, return it to its charger. Now, there are many types of ophthalmoscopes, but essentially they all work in the same way. Firstly, you should be able to identify the on 
off dial and it's with this that you can alter the illumination. You need to ensure there is adequate light. Next, you should be able to find a dial that can be turned either clockwise or anti-clockwise. This adjusts the power of the lens within the ophthalmoscope and should be set for the moment to zero. Some ophthalmoscopes may come with a series of apertures or filters. As you can see, this can adjust the spot size. If you've got one, just remember small spots for small pupils and large spots for large pupils. Don't worry about the colours for now. Right, so you've checked your equipment, it works and so you can begin your examination. First of all, as with anything, you do need to make sure you've cleaned your hands before you go near your patient. And next, you have to explain to the patient what it is you're going to do. Ideally, it should be good to use dilating drops, usually a very short-acting dilating drop such as tropicamide. Patients should be warned, however, that this may blur their vision for an hour or so. If you can, try to dim the room lights, particularly if you're attempting, attempting fundoscopy undilated. First of all, ask the patient to look straight ahead and place your hand on their forehead. At an arm's length, put the ophthalmoscope up to your right eye and look for the red reflex, swinging the light over to the left eye. Now, the red reflex is the result of light reflecting back from the retina. If no red reflex is seen, either your technique is poor or there's a significant problem with the eye regarding the clarity of one of the optical media. And from front to back, this could be due to a problem with the cornea, the anterior chamber, the lens or the vitreous cavity. You will look silly if you attempt fundoscopy with no red reflex. Once the red reflex is identified, proceed to examine the right eye, your right eye to their right eye. Come progressively closer until you start to see retinal detail. Don't be surprised how close you need to come, although touching noses means you've gone too far. To focus the retinal image, you may have to rotate the lenses either clockwise or anti-clockwise. This is to account for potential focusing differences or refractive errors that may exist either with you and or the patient. If you wear very strong glasses, it may be best to keep these on. Right, here we go. Remember, the image you obtain will be highly magnified. You will not see a fundal picture depicted in textbooks, but a small circular image which you have to piece together to produce your own picture. Please don't panic, think logically. Have a system. The most likely structure you will see is a retinal vessel. Follow this either up or down to reach the optic disc. Starting at the disc, which should be nice and pink with vessels entering and leaving, remember the three C's, cup, colour, contour. Now follow the four vascular arteries, remembering each has a retinal artery and a retinal vein. Then ask the patient to look up, down, left and right, following the patient's eye at all times. It's here that you will be allowed to pick up peripheral changes. Finally, ask the patient to look directly at the light. This will bring the macula into direct view. This can be very uncomfortable and should be the last thing you do. Repeat the above on the fellow eye. This